there is another side of the information security so so far we have been talking about penetration testing and ethical hacking and like you know what not exploiting certain vulnerabilities but the other side of security is about the compliance and when i say compliance there are uh, governor risk and compliance there are a lot of frameworks in the industry such as iso 27001 soc 2 hipaa pci and depending on all these frameworks uh, like you know your organization may have to choose one uh, like you know based on the applicability so suppose you are working in a your organization has a saas product and and they are functioning in the in the us then they would more likely or not they will go with the soc 2 um if they are functioning like another you know, customer they are storing data in european region they have to be in compliance with the gdpr so likewise there are uh, different compliance but there is one thing common between all the compliance which is risk assessment now in this episode of course we cannot cover all the compliance so i'm going to give you uh, all the other compliance are, are very like you know uh, easy to digest but and and also as i said like if you know the risk assessment you can get into any compliance but main thing is i want to i want to give you a quick introduction on what's the hipaa uh, because hipaa has many different titles and like you know sub clauses and etc but as an information security uh, professional we don't want to dive into like all of those we only want to focus on what's the relevant to us like what's the relevant to the security so we're going to get into that uh, in this episode uh hope you like you know enjoy if you're enjoying the episode so far uh, if you do please hit the thumbs up button that's going to be immensely helpful for this channel uh all right so let's get into what's the types of the data so the type of data are also based on the data classification and you must have seen this uh, or heard this various times um, the data is classified or confidential or restricted or or public etc this kind of terms so based on this data classification uh, we we are only going to like you know focus on the confidential or restricted data so for example pii uh, all of your information such as your username password uh, your first name last name uh, date of birth etc becomes like you know uh, pii information then your payment card industry data so suppose whenever you are doing like an you know, in transactions or you are working in a fintech industry or you are working in a banking industry uh those industry has to be in compliant with the pci because they have a lot of credit card related data or card related uh, uh like you know information your banking details etc and the lastly is the health information uh, we go to the hospitals our records are like you know nowadays of course our results and everything is is Uh, i i actually see all of my reports uh, via software portal so of course the software portal has to be uh, hipaa compliant because they pro- protect and and like you know they store process my health records and uh, we'll we'll see later in the in this episode why like you know what, how does hipaa enforce some of the rules uh, to protect my privacy or my privacy of the my health record data so your uh, example for the phi data would be like you know my insurance information my lab results my medical records etc so let's start with the hipaa overview so the uh, the hipaa is health insurance portability and accountability act and it was designed to modernize the flow of the health information so uh, i think probably 30 40 years ago uh, i don't think so uh, like you know all the health related information and data were were elect- electronic it was all paper based and etc so maybe it was not needed to protect like you know data in the electronic form but now it does so they have made some modifications uh, to adopt the modernization their primary goal is to protect phi but also protect pii of the uh, like you know uh, of the user then it also addresses the limitation on healthcare insurance coverage uh, which is not in the scope of the security but that's also the primary goal of the hipaa there are in total five titles however we are only going to focus on title number 2 uh, which is like one of them and and this title focuses on preventing healthcare fraud and abuse so if we see title 2 more in detail what it does uh, so all the compliance has one thing in common which is risk assessment and risk assessment gives you what policies and procedures you need to write so title 2 also establishes the policy and procedure for securing the phi so your 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 like you know uh, example could be your privacy policy your access control policy etc 
So Title II has two rules. One, the privacy rule, so use and disclosure of the PHI. You would see any website uh, has a privacy policy. Uh, nowadays, like if you look up any website, I think most of the common website will have the privacy uh, policy on their website. And the second rule is the security rule. And this is what more applicable to us. This is this with the electronic protected health information or we also call it EPHI. Now, what is the example of the PHI? So we saw like insurance details, but dates also goes to the PHI, uh, like a date of birth. Uh, if it's only a year, it doesn't count really PHI, but if it's your full date of year, then yes, uh, it does. Then your SSN, social security number, uh, then your account numbers, your medical record numbers, uh, your health insurance beneficiary numbers, your biometric identifiers, so my fingers, ret retinal and voice prints, then my full face photographic image and any comparable images. So all of this can consider as a, a protected health information because looking up any of this information, someone can easily identify me. Now we saw there are two security rules, privacy and security. So what's the difference between both? So privacy focuses more on the right to keep health information private, right? Of course, like how do you, how do, how do, you, how do I make sure that my my information or my, my patient's information always remains private? Who can access it? So apart from doctor or assigned doctor or nurses uh, and probably my like you know my spouse or whoever I have nominated as beneficiary should not be able to access my my data. Under what condition? information can be disclosed to the third party sometimes like you know there is a there is some government agency or for some reason for audit or etc they require to see some information so they also if you if you closely read through all the privacy policy which you find on a common website there is a clause on there which does say your information can be disclosed to the third party under certain circumstances so they have to define this and uh, usually it's just a bunch of policy and procedures, so, right? So it just like, uh, as I said, like in privacy policy, it, it will it will lay out that under what circumstances they'll, they'll disclose the information, but they, there is no technical controls here. It's just the policy that, okay, and then when you say, okay, I when you visit this website, you in indirectly or like, you know, you accept the privacy policy of that, of that organization. Now, on the other hand, security is more of operational and technical controls, where you enforce everything, where you enforce like, you know, your firewalls and your, your uh, security groups and your, uh, what do you call it, like virtual uh, private network and, and your uh, API gateway and etc. Since we got more digital, uh, this was a new rule created by the PHI. Of course, it was not recent, I think about 10 years ago. And this provides a mechanism to protect the privacy of the PHI. Because in privacy, we say, okay, only this person, people can uh, authorize to access my data, but how do we technically, how, what is the mechanism behind doing that? That's adopted by the security rule. So you have the access control layer, you have like, you know, different, uh, different way to authenticate the users and identify only these users will be able to access my patient's records. And then it also provides controls from unauthorized disclosure alternation like tampering and loss or destruction so we also talk about like you know backup of the data and if it's recovered like how do we restore the data and etc so this is all covered in the security rule now why do we need to worry about the hipaa or why do organization have to worry about the hipaa so if they are following uh, if they are processing or protect uh, like you know storing their patient information then they have to go through some panels if they if they violate any of this policy. So tier one is when they are unaware of HIPAA violation. Uh, tier two is reasonable cause that the covered entity knew about. When we say covered entity, we mean like, you know, the organization or the hospital who is, who is storing or processing the uh, PHI. Tier three is willful neglect of HIPAA rule. So they have neglected. And tier four is neglect of the HIPAA rule and no effort made to correct the violation within 30 days of discovery which goes like in you know, a maximum to 1.5 million a year 
so because of this uh, violation and penalties of course industries have to like you know be be in compliance with the uh, uh, hipaa and hipaa is very strong in terms of uh, applying the violations and penalties uh, so so this is just like you know a high level introduction on what hipaa is and how it relates to the information security what what kind of uh, uh rules are there and and very high level design if you want a detail level like okay what are the in the within the security rule what kind of controls do they recommend or or enforces and how that those controls could be implemented if you are interested in any of those uh do let me know if the comments section if i see enough uh, audience if i see enough interest then i'll go and like you know dive deep into the hipaa compliance uh but if you enjoy my video so far and and thanks for staying with me like you know so far please hit the thumbs up button and i'll come up with a new uh, session next week uh, on monday but yeah until then thank you bye